Hello once again, my people, it is I, Veed, and welcome back to My Burning Heart. First off, I know that a lot of people watch this series because it's just of the queer side. Um, so I want to say now, instead of one of my other videos, thank you so much for letting me take my break. Um, I need, I kind of needed to take one, uh, to be totally real. I've just, a lot of things have been happening. I put a video up, I, like, got my new job, and I'm already, like... <laughs> <laughs> way up there right now um like manager wise like way up there so that's taking up a lot of my time uh and then drag's taking up a lot of my time and then i just went to denver and uh i can't really say it right now i'll say it in a in a in a second um but just know that um i've been really busy and i thank you guys so much for letting me you know take my break i don't know how editing this video is gonna go, but just know I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I think it should be fine now. Um, after Denver, everybody wants to fuck me. Everybody wants to fuck me. Uh, um, so anyways, I don't remember what happened last time. I'm pretty sure we got caught by guards, uh, and then was starved, and now, uh, Rashid's back. Um, and we're trying to keep it a little hush, hush, secret, secret. We only know that that's going to blow up at some point in time. Okay, well, anyways, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna do what we usually do and just... Adnan, uh, I've missed you so much. If you miss me so much, then why don't you just put a ring on it? <sighs> why don't you just put a ring on it? God, I've missed recording. He held the boy in his arms in a tight and long embrace. He smelled good. Something spicy and fragrant. Probably like a scented body oil. Adnan breathed in, relaxed a little bit. Still. Hey, police car, can you not? I am in the middle of recording. And we know you're loud because I'm wearing my headphones. Thank you. How fucking rude. <laughs> Still, when the Sultan let go of him, there was a line of worry between his eyebrows. Are you alright? You look different. Moody, but that's not news. Have you lost weight? I'm trying to get skinty for you. Is it working? I'm trying to be a little twinky twinky. Mm, that's not totally not because I was starving in a dungeon. I'm just mm, skinty winty. Anon shrugged with uneasiness. The less the man knew, the better. A slow smile spread through Sultan's features. Were you worried thinking of me? I mean... I guess so. <laughs> I mean... I guess it was something like that. <laughs> Glare at him and say nothing? Change topics? I'm gonna be a bottom and I'm gonna change topics to avoid answering. This man... Honestly, what does he want me to say? It'd be safe. It would be rude to just say no to his face. You must tell me all about your trip. How was the ship? Bam! Got it. Look oh, at her. The ship was huge. I will take you with me one day, so you have the experience. It's more uncomfortable than it seems. Like. What do you mean more uncomfortable? Okay, listen. I'm used to living the pirate life. I'm used to living a little bit of a scandalous lifestyle. But you haven't answered me. Are you avoiding the topic on purpose? I mean, possibly. Uh, I don't really know. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> Feeling cornered, Adnan averted his eyes and didn't reply. Rashid looked a bit disappointed, but soon a small smile appeared again on his face. He looked around and checked that there weren't being spied on from the harem's common room. The couple of faces in the window went back to their own business. In fact, I, for my part, I've been thinking of you. You've been thinking of me? What have you been thinking about me? Have you been thinking about my body? Have you been thinking about this pussy? Have you been thinking about how good I make you feel at night? Because honestly, like, I've got, okay, okay, if I can actually get into story time, um, because Denver happened, uh, because you know, she is a fucking furry. <laughs> um, 
I went in and I like no joke like like this like the weekend was so much fun like yeah like drama was involved in my little group of friends uh, and I was the middleman and like all of it uh, and then there was like a little scandal with me but we don't have to get into that scandal um, but besides that though or it's like a Saturday happened um, and I went to a room party and this room party was very you know not safe for work so obviously I can talk about it on my channel <laughs> It was very not safe for work. There was orgies, there was drinking, there was smoking, there was hot, humid, sexual temptations. Uh, and I was part of that. <laughs> like, no joke. Like, when I... Okay, but don't judge me. Don't, ju don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. I just want to be a little bit of a party animal. Um, but no joke. I went into there... Uh, thinking that it was just probably just going to be like a nice fun time where I was like, you know what, I'm going to drink, I'm going to socialize a little bit, I'm going to let myself be known in the fandom, which a few people did recognize me, which is kind of, it's because it was like, like, there's my friends that know me as Veer, but then people called me Andres, which is my persona name, and people were like, oh my god, is that Andres? And I was like, what? Me? <laughs> um... So that was fun. Uh, but besides that, though, you know, I was like, let me get myself, like, a little bit of alone in the fandom. Let me just, you know, mingle, a little mingle here, a little mingle there. A little drinky drink. Possibly a little hit from the person that I slept with. Because a person came in, and we already had chemistry from earlier that day. Uh, so obviously I slept with him in the room. And it was a huge goddamn fucking orgy. And, um, you know, I was ready. I dislocated his hip. I wouldn't say dislocated his hip, but I definitely, like, messed up his hip. I'm single again, ladies. <laughs> Men. <laughs> um, but every single time that I wrote him, he would just be like, he would take it and be like, oh, this feels so good. <sighs> Yo, who needs a kidney puncher? The kidney puncher is what he called his vape. The amount of times that I just wanted to get off and then get out of the room and then just walk the hotel room naked. Yeah, dude, it was too much. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot. So that was my weekend. Who did you have an horse you So anyways, back to it. <laughs> Adnan arced an eyebrow in disbelief. Always the sweet talker, he thought. I brought you a present. Oh, a present? It better be something to stick me inside with. Oh, a present? It better be jewelry. Make me a goddess. He wasn't used to getting anything from anyone. So when Rashid took a golden bracelet... Jewelry! So when Rashid took a golden bracelet from one of his pockets and handed it to him, Adnan felt really confused. Go ahead. Put it on. It's for you. Oh, cute. Adnan studied the shiny item, making it roll in his hands. It looked... expensive. Hurt making yourself into Paris Hilton. Do you like it? I do. The boy nodded with a little smile. When I managed to run away, I could sell this for a good amount of... Okay, yes, we get it, but bitch, this is not the time for you to have that kind of mindset and kind of notion. Just take it as a fucking gift, you whore. When I managed to run away, I could sell this for a good amount and pay to join a caravan across the desert a good animal amount. Thank you very much, your majesty. Seeing you smile is worth the price of that fuel. He took his hand again and led the way to his bedroom. Oh, are we having sexy times? He's so cute and so hot in bed. Never mind. I love how reserved he seems at first, but how he lets himself go once he warms up. Yeah, fuck you. I don't want to deal with you. I'm only for Rashid. The great vizier yawned, barely hiding it behind his hand. Barely hiding it behind his hand? Am oh, I yeah. Boring you by any chance? The tall man shrugged. The Small sigh. All this talk about that brat. Honestly, your majesty, you sound as if you were seriously crushing on him. Yeah, because he is, because my pussy is that great. 
Do you see how pink it is? Do you see how tight it is? Do you see how voluptuous my pussy is? I say you shut the fuck up because you are never getting any of it. <laughs> never in your life. Remember, he's nothing but a slave. Just property. <laughs> you think that, but we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> That's a way to put it. Not exactly the way I see it, but I'll keep it in mind. And aren't you glad I'm so fond of Adnan? You were the one who found him and brought him to the palace after all. So you should be proud of how fitting your purchase was. Purchase. That's a word. Now my pussy's expensive. Kitty cat cat meow meow. Where's my... It's right here. The vizier looked aside with a grunt and mumbled his next words. I mostly regret my choice now, to be honest. Well though. You serve me well, and he makes me happy. Is there anything wrong with that? True, is there anything wrong with that, you fucking whore? <gasps> Let me live in peace, goddammit. The vizier pulled a face again and squinted through the windows. No, your majesty. Great. By the way, did something happen during my absence? Ooh. If you tell him, I will crush you. If the vizier tensed uh, up at hearing the sultan's words, he hid it really well. Everything was calm in the palace. Why do you ask? Has he told you something? No, he just looks skinnier. He looks like Trixie Mattel, skinty queen. Rashid frowned, confused and more than a bit frustrated. Who, Adnan? No, you know how he is. He would never complain aloud, even if something big happened to him. He's too proud to tell me anything like that. There was something odd in the way he behaved last evening. Something different. He was more serious and moody. It seemed worried. Probably because he thought that you would probably have me executed for trying to run away from her. Gorgeous cock. But, um, I'm kind of over that. You know, it's been, I think, a month since I uploaded. But you know what? You know, it's, it's fun. It's great. It's fantastic. I wish you would open more to me. The vizier sighed again and answered the sultan after putting on his best bored expression. I can ask around and tell you if I manage to discover something. Oh, thank you, Harun. Remember not to push too hard with the palace's tasks, please. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us live comfortably and beautifully, even though, you know, for whatever reason I fucking hate it, but I wouldn't mind being a whore. As long as you <laughs> remember not to pick him too often. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You're right. Don't worry. Heard. That evening was a repeat of so many other dinner times with the Sultan visiting the male harem. He asked Adnan to sit by his side and then have dinner while watching some slaves singing, playing music, or dancing for him. Where's my ukulele? I can play a little something for you. I can play Moonlight by Grace Vanderwall. <laughs> Wee-ee-ee, we're dancing in the moonlight. The boys usually wanted to chat with him for a short while, and some of them always flirted and tried to be chosen by his majesty. That night, Rashid played with Adnan's hair while they listened to the musicians. He didn't seem to be in the mood for talking, so after a while, Adnan spaced out and just enjoyed the music.
only presence that Nan could feel was the guards watching in their tower. Where are you taking me? What's all this about? All kinds of black thoughts were crossing in Nan's mind. The man was going to get rid of him or throw him into a dungeon again, he was sure. Shut up! What the fuck is wrong with you? God, who put your fucking titties in a twist? Look at me. Talk to me. Yes, I may be a slave, but talk to me like a fucking human, and then maybe we'll discuss on something. He walked the rest of the way to his majesty's bedroom in complete silence, although it was obvious to Adnan that the man was in a terrible mood. The vizier all but pushed Adnan through the open door and left, closing the door at his back. Jesus Christ, why are you so pissed? Why are you so angry with yourself? You know, Mr. Vizier, a man that I do not remember your name because I don't care for you. What are you going to do with me, though? Ah, uh, Adnan, about time. I was getting ready to turn in. Adnan opened his mouth to protest. He wasn't going to share the Sultan's bed with someone else again, thank you very much. Halim was one thing, but Wasim? He didn't even like to speak to that guy. But his harsh words died in his throat when he noticed Wasim wasn't present. He looked around. He could see the bathroom and the dressing room through an open arc, and there wasn't anyone else there. Rashid climbed to his bed and patted the empty space to his side while grinning. Come here. Aren't you sleepy yet? I mean, I am, but like, what's your damage? That was... suspicious. Adnan hesitated for a moment and then walked to the bed. Hi, what's going on, mister? Oh, what do you want my sexy body for? The bed covers... <laughs> the bed covers were untidy and the whole room smelled of sex. So it seemed had come, and then he seemingly left. He stared at the sultan with confusion. I just want you to sleep with me, nothing else. Just sleep. Oh. Heard he just wants a cuddle, buddy. Sleep. Just sleep. The Sultan. Sure. He untied his belt and slid out of his outfit, taking his jewelry off with great care and placing every piece on a low table. Then he joined Rashid on the bed. The man was already lying down at his side and kept watching his every movement with a smile. Yes, he's naked. Is it that strange that I want your company during the night? No, I was just expecting you to fuck me. Only for sleeping? <laughs> yes, it is. Rashid chuckled. His eyes were already half-lidded with sleep. I'm already sated, Adnan. So let's turn the light off and rest for the night. Damn, you really like me, don't you? Oh, you like this body. You like this? This is the wrong way. You like this body, and you like this cuddle, buddy. You like it when I'm the little spoon. I've never liked being the big spoon, so you better make me the little spoon, or else I'm going to be fucking weird about it. By the way, this guy that I'm seeing, I'm not dating. I'm not gonna date for a while. Um, just to let you know, I don't. I'm not gonna date for a while. But this guy have, that I have been seeing for. 60 times um the same guy that i wrote on saturday during that orgy party um he likes being the little spoon and he is um taller than me i think he's like six foot and i'm like you know my subtle five foot seven so me being the big spoon is like always like weird and i'm like i get it you know big boys need to be a little spoon for 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 most of the time but i'm like i'm always a big spoon but, like, I'm, like, submissive and breedable. So, like... What is this power dynamic? Oh, <laughs> uh, where's my mouse? There it is. Adnan put out the oil- the only oil lamps still lit and got comfortable in the bed. The pillow smelled of someone else. It was an alien, unpleasant feeling. That didn't fade out even when Rashid buried his face in Adnan's hair and sighed with content spooning him and whispering his name before following asleep. Oh hi, look, it's the daytime. What are these transitions? I say this every episode, what are these transitions? The next day, as everything in Anand's life started to fall into a pattern, he would stay the day busy with the harem's tasks and spending some of his free hours learning to read, be it with Halim or on his own. Of course, Halim still taught him the rest of the abilities he was expected to master. Dancing, singing, playing chess, some general cultural knowledge like history, geography, or politics. Oh, the list was endless. And then in the evenings, the Sultan would call for him just before going to bed. After spending some quality time 
with another slave or in, from the male or female harem. He would kiss him, pet his hair, and tell him sweet nothings, but most of the nights nothing else happened apart from sleeping. It was really confusing for Adnan, especially when having to endure the smell of someone else's sex on the Sultan of the Sheets. Oh, so on the Sultan and the Sheets, got it. Got it, again, we love transitions. These transitions are going like nobody's business. The garden was easily Adnan's favorite place at the palace. There was usually a nice cool breeze in the mornings and even in the afternoons one could escape for the heat by in the shade of the trees or the veranda. He had finished the little task he had in the morning. The sultan was at work, so the boys weren't needed, and he still had an hour until the dining hall needed to be prepared for lunch. So Itnan was sitting down on his favorite bench of the garden with his book, deciding to master his reading skills. He had already finished all the short texts in the book, but Halim told him to read it again, to gain reading speed and comprehension. Hmm. It's true now that I already know more or less what to say, I can read the words faster, he thought with pride. Yes, we love a we love a person that is no longer pit from Kid Icarus. We love a bitch that knows how to read. Well, Halim and he had been at it for a month by then, so it was about time he started to see the fruits of his hard work. Slacking off, Adnan. Always and forever learning to read. What about you, you fucking queer? <laughs> Damn. He'd been so focused on reading that he hadn't heard the steps of the group of the men crossing the guard, led by his majesty and that despicable vizier. <laughs> Leave him alone, Harun. He deserves a break, too. Thank you. The sultan's eyes went straight to his book. Adnan hurried to hide it behind his back. The great vizier didn't miss a thing, as always. What are you reading about? Politics? Economy? Religion? No, I'm just reading about learning how to read. Rashid chuckled but gestured from the group to keep on walking. Harun, lead the way. Our dear dignitaries are surely thirsty. A cold tea would be great right now, if I might suggest. Oh, are you gonna make me brew tea and pour it everywhere? Pour it all over your body? A chorus of agreeing vo voices followed with Sultan's words and they kept walking to the other side of the garden, addressing curious looks at Adnan at passing. Rashid stayed until the last of them had passed and then approached Adnan, whispering to him. I'm locking that, by the way. There we go, so in that way it doesn't move accidentally. Sorry for being so busy lately. This evening we'll end dinner rather late, with the dignitaries here. But I'll claim you afterwards. Thank you for claiming me afterwards. I appreciate it. So be patient and wait for me. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, are you finally gonna fuck me? <gasps> Are you finally gonna slam this fucking pussy into submission? Dude, it is like three o'clock in the morning. I cannot be serious with this. I desire you more than food and drink. My body, my senses, my mind. Hunger for your taste. Damn, you be kinda. Damn, you being. Damn, you being kinda sexy. Uh... You being kind of hot. Oh, you're being kind of a whore. Kind of a little bit of a Lahore. House of Lahore, get into it. The man grinned and winked at Adnan, and then he followed his guest inside the palace. <laughs> Look at how angry he is. He is ready to, like, bite something. Adnan stared at his retreating back, completely bewildered. What the hell? How could he say things like that with a straight face on top of it? Idnan shook his head in disbelief and opened up his book again. <sighs> what a madman. But that night, after sex, the Sultan rose from the bed and ordered some sweet wine. Would you drink with me, Adnan? I've barely stepped in the male harem these last weeks. There are always guests around. I love how it's just automatically gotten to the point where they talk about sex and they're not even showing the sex anymore. Thank you. I love that. I love having a break from seeing naughty shit on my screen. Rashid had put a light tunic on. He flopped on an armchair with a loud sigh. I must always put on a polite smile and please everyone. Always. I guess that comes with the position. It's rather tiresome sometimes. 
Dude, I feel that. Welcome to managing. Welcome to being a leader. Welcome to... This is not spawn, by the way. Welcome to doing things like that. It not finished cleaning himself and put his clothes back on. Following the example of the sultan, he sat by his side, pouring only a moderate amount of wine in his glass. He sipped it and found it sweet and easy to drink. It was a wine for desserts or appetizers. Oh my god, they're so good. Dude, the amount of times that I've gone out to like fancy dinners and like got drunk off of sweet wine is too many. And um, I think I might have a problem. And the taste was more appealing to a non than regular wine. He poured himself a second glass. Do you like this one? It's a present from one of the dignitaries. It comes from Rhodes. They're quite famous for their wine. I very much like it, and I will very much get drunk off of it, and I will ask you to put it back inside my body. <laughs> Adnan sipped again and nodded. Rhodes, have you ever been there? The man softly chuckled. <laughs> of course, many times. Our Sultan has a commercial route with their harbors. Oh, am I actually on Rashid's route now? We have also an established commercial route with Tunisia. Here, taste these tarts. They come from Tunis and go well with the wine. Oh, very much so. Is it because it's dessert? It's because it's dessert kind of wine. He put one of the sweet little tarts in Adnan's mouth before he could complain, and the laugh seemed to uh, oh wait, and then laugh seeing the slave's surprised face. Adnan was actually going to refuse the offer, but he, because he wasn't hungry. But to be honest, he didn't have access to this kind of delicacy unless the Sultan offered. The tart was made of honey and figs. Ooh, hoo -hoo, girl, you got me fucked up. Listen, I just had McDonald's. <laughs> Hashtag not spawn. Only because I have, I've been having like a craving for like sandwiches. Um, but like, damn, that could open up my stomach. I could open up my stomach and I could feel a little bit naughty, nasty, and needy. Fuck. <laughs> the tart was made of honey and figs, and Anand realized the sexual activity might have stirred his appetite, because he could easily eat ten of those tarts right then. <laughs> the taste is surprising, right? I mean, I guess so. I mean, it's very sexy and subtle. It's delicious. <laughs> delicious, sexy, and subtle. <laughs> he made an effort to avoid licking his fingers clean. That would certainly look rude. <laughs> But he needed more of that taste. Listen, just like go down like a couple of inches and then you'll have like another like long log. Dude, Denver fucked me up and because of this fursuit head, everyone wants to fuck me. I promise I'll bring you some on my next trip. Thank you. Idnan's heart took a leap uh, at hearing those words. Are you going to travel again soon? The threatening face of the vizier appeared in Adnan's mind and made him feel uneasy. Being in the palace without the sultan by his side, that was dangerous. Those last weeks since Rashid came back from his previous travel had been a haven of peace. The sultan was reassuringly ever present, even when he wasn't physically in the same room. Adnan could always feel the vizier's gaze watching him in person or through a spy, so his chances of, uh, of escaping were lower now. He kept waiting for his chance, sure, but it wasn't going to be easy. But apart from feeling watched, Adnan didn't fear the vizier or what he could do to him. As long as Rashid was in the palace, he felt protected. I think so, in some weeks. But I'll try to make it short. Unless you wanted to come with me. Adnan's mood fell. What a disgrace, he thought. To be honest, I'm seriously considering taking you with me. Because I'm a whore, because I'm a slutty slutty, because you want to fuck me on this ship, because you think I'm a husband material. All the single ladies. <laughs> I'm not in drag, why am I like this? Adnan blinked in disbelief. Don't give me that look. I already told you once, right? That way I wouldn't miss you so much. Damn. I do really have Rashid wrapped around my finger, fuck. Oh, sweet talk him, sweet talk him, baby. Adnan rolls his eyes at him. This man and his sappy talk. That would be great. I'm sure I'd enjoy a ship trip with you. Rashid opened his eyes wide as saucers. Perrier, get into this uh, pussy. Really takes me by surprise. Would you really? I would, because I like you. I would indeed like to go on a trip with you. I would like to show you so many things. Have you ever seen a talking bird? 
I have not, but I would love to. Uh, talking bird? Yeah, it's called a parrot. He's making fun of me. He thinks I'm so ignorant and gullible that I would believe anything he says. Yes! There are parrots with all the colors in the rainbow, and some of them are able to learn how to say human words, even full sentences. We love parrots in this house. Anand raised an eyebrow, uh, his eyebrows in disbelief. I have seen all kinds of parrots in my travels, but none of them could speak. Because they don't live near the desert. They are found in the jungle. Same with albino tigers. Albino tigers? So, white? How can you tell it's a tiger if it's white? Uh, because it looks like a tiger. Adnan, don't be so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> because they keep their black stripes. Albino tigers are black and white. And Nan crossed his arms and frowned, not buying a single word. You are making it up just to mock me. I swear I'm not. What's the strangest animal you've ever seen? And Nan thought for a long moment. I once saw ants the size of my fist. They lived under the sand of the desert. Those are some large ants, and I do not want to fuck with those, Miss Ma'am. Really? I miss most of the desert fauna when we travel. And Nan tissed at him. Of course. You surely travel in your palanquin, well covered by curtains so the heat doesn't bother you. You must travel on foot, horse, or camel to truly enjoy the trip. <laughs> I won't say otherwise. But I would like you to try traveling on my palanquin with me, at least once. Oh my god, cute! You can see them just kind of, you know, just like getting at each other. Just, just like, alright, flirty, flirty, McFlirty. Let's fuck again. <laughs> Nah, but this is cute. I'm actually, like, in all seriousness, like, this is- this is actually starting to, like, become cute. Like, yes, it's still toxic because one is a slave and the other is its owner, but, um, this is actually starting to be kind of cute. No hot sand under your feet, no searing sun over your head, just the warm breeze hissing between the dunes. And none all but- uh, and none all but pouted, unamused. What a pampered bastard. <sighs> I'm tired. Can we sleep now? The Sultan stood up and reached for Adnan's hand. He kissed his knuckles, surprising the boy. Of course, my dear Adnan. It's rather late already. It's rather late. It's 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm not calling you old, I promise. They blew the last oil lamps out and got into bed. Yes. Rashid automatically held at Nan's middle and started petting his- You know what? I'm gonna pause it right here just in case it gets into naughty things, okay? Listen, listen, I'm here for it, but like, what if it gets into some sexy? I'm not- I'm not prepared. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Veed. I hope that you had a wonderful time watching this. I hope that you had a wonderful time watching me get more in touch with Rashid. <laughs> Abdal Rashid, that's his name. My name is Adnan. Um, and yeah, just be kind of cute about it. Make sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe button down below. You know how puffily to be out. Make sure to hit that notification bell so that we don't miss up on any of my uploads. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.